Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our Thursday Abacus Law webinar. Today we're going to have the topic of Ask Me Anything Accounting or Billing. Um, my name is Perry Lafferty, and I'll be your host today as we go through the, this. Um, a couple of things before we get started. There is a question section on your GoToWebinar panel where if you have a question, you can go ahead and type it in. Now, a couple of us got a little head start on this and sent in questions ahead of time, so I've got some here to start with, but please feel free to type in your question and um, we'll be able to you know, get to it as, as much as time is allowing. All right, so with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and start here. Um, we have a couple of questions to start off with that are about receiving a payment. Okay, receiving a payment from a client, possibly in advance, all right? So in other words, the clients come in and you have signed the fee agreement with the client. They are going to be your client. You're going to be doing legal work for them and you request or they pay a payment up front. All right, so how do we enter that into the billing and accounting program here? All right, well, uh, first thing first, of course, we always have to ask the question, which bank account? is the money going into? Is it going into the trust account or will it be going into the operating account? Some pe people may call it the general account, operating account, business account, all of those are one and the same. The other uh, obvious choice is trust. So long as we keep the difference between operating and trust, we're good to go. So obviously if it's a trust money, uh, or I said money's going into the trust account to be used against the work done on their case, that would be a trust deposit. You simply open this up and click on add, fill out the information, and then you're going to post that. Now the specific question I had today was what about if it's going into the operating account? And if you've used the program, you will know that operating is a little different from the trust deposit. There's a few more questions asked there. So let's go ahead and see how this works. So if the money that the client's giving you up front is going to be deposited into the operating account, you're gonna come under the billing drop-down menu and go into payments received. This is where all client payments should go. This will update your operating checkbook, all of your productivity reports, also your um, AR report, your uh, balance sheet, your income statement, depending on what type of accounting process you have. So this is where all payments that hit operating go. So we open this up. So now of course you're gonna click on add. Now before I get any further, you may see that my screens might just look a little different than yours. Well, I have recently upgraded to Abacus 23.25, um, you can always tell what version of Abacus Accounting you're running down here in the left-hand corner. Uh, you can see my version's 23.25.16b. Well, the main thing I'm pointing out here is if you're on 23.25, whatever, you're gonna see changes to look like what my screen looks like. So you may wanna think about scheduling an update if you don't have 23.25, because obviously they're always adding goodies into the system. So back to our question at hand, all right, how do we add a, a deposit coming into the system? Now, first things first, it's obviously not gonna be all matters. Don't we wish that would happen? Everybody would pay right up front all at once? Nope, not gonna happen. So what we're going to do is go ahead and pick our matter, okay? I've kind of set one up ahead of time, so I'm just gonna write the matter number there and choose my particular matter with a double click that pops that into place. Now, they're paying up front, right? So there is no balance due at this point. So I'm gonna say okay, but we're gonna pause for a second so I make sure I mentioned the fact that the fact that they are your client, you do have them set up in your abacus law, you do have the bill to, so they're showing here in abacus billing and accounting, all right? And you may even have them, if they're set up as a flat fee or hourly case, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that date is in here. Now I realize we haven't billed them yet, but what we're doing here is making sure that we have that set up so that when we do process a bill, it knows how to do it uh, on its own. It knows how to go ahead and take care of that. 
So we want to make sure we have the bright, the correct billing mode. If it's a flat fee case, you want to say so with the flat fee amount and use the appropriate billing format code for that. Or of course, if it's an hourly case, you would designate it's an hourly case. All right, but these uh, these couple of uh, little setup keys here want we want to make sure these are done before we actually you know get any further. We've got to have them set up in here. So now we have him set up. This is going to be a flat fee case for this particular instance. So I've put in my matter number, and I'm going to say that he is paid twenty five hundred. You know, I'm going to make it different so it's not half twenty four hundred dollars. So, of course, there's no invoice. We haven't processed a bill for him yet. He's just giving me some of the money up front into my operating. So I go ahead and state that. This is simply telling me it's going into the operating account. As long as this never says trust, you're good. Now, of course, you're going to put in how it was paid. If it's not by check, you're going to take that out and put in how. Because this will always come back to get you if you don't. Now, this is where you have to select no invoice, okay? No invoice means that we haven't processed a bill for him yet, and we're simply putting the money in. So when you select no invoice, you're going to get the screen over here. This used to be called the breakout tab, but they've kind of changed it a little bit in version 2325. And now you can go ahead and uh, distribute the appropriate amount to the different categories. If you know there's going to be some hard cost and you want to go ahead and pay those or, or say the payment is for that now, you can do so. So let's say that this was 250 okay? Um, if there were soft costs involved, obviously we could say that as well. So we'll say 50 here, okay? Now the remaining balance is going to go into fees all right, so that's going to be the remaining balance. Down here it's telling me, so I, if I'm not good at math, I can see it right there, 2100 Now, no invoice has been processed. Uh, Abacus does not have a clue who worked on this case. So we have to remember that because we still have the fee distribution, all right? But there's a hard rule in Abacus that if the payment's being applied up front, and we don't have any time tickets entered, so the system has no clue as to who's doing the work, the only way it can distribute it is to go ahead and give the credit to the responsible timekeeper. All right? So that's the normal way Abacus is going to go ahead and sort this out. Now, if you are producing a bill and then applying the payment, Abacus can look at the time tickets, even if it's a flat fee case and tell you exactly who worked on that case and actually show the different timekeepers here, all right? But in the case where we have not done any work, we've got to let Abacus either, you're, you're knowing that it's going to assign to responsible, or if you want to change that, you can come in and do so by choosing your own timekeeper with the amount or multiple timekeepers with our little add timekeeper button here. If you don't want it to go to responsible, you can parse it out to whom you'd like, all right? So that's basically adding in our payment um, ahead of time and parsing it out into the different categories so that we now can go ahead and post this. And that is going to show on the first bill we process, if it's a flat fee, the very first bill that shows is a whole flat fee, it will show this $2,400 payment. If it's an hourly bill, it will show the time tickets with the uh, chosen criteria and show they've paid twenty or twenty four hundred. So this has to be input first for us to be able to um, get the payment in to show on the bill. Okay. All right, mine's acting here on me, so we'll just get out of here for a minute. All right. Now, also, someone has asked about a retainer. Okay. Now here again, a retainer's generally we're getting money and we don't know who to give credit to. So you can come in and of course choose your matter again. See if I can remember what this one was. Okay. And the dollar amount. Just making things up as I go here. I'm going to say the payment method. Now the description has been brought up from the bottom to the top here. So that's why I'm a little rusty here because I'm not quite used to this version yet, but you want to put in how they were paid. All right, the, check on the no invoice button. 
And then if you want to call it a retainer, okay, you can do so by coming down here and entering the dollar amount for the retainer. Abacus treats this as fee revenue. So whether you put it on the fee category or on the retainer category, that's not a lot of difference in Abacus as far as if no work's been done. Okay, if the work's been done, we want to put it in fees and distribute it out to whomever did the work. But if it's just straight retainer, you can go ahead and input it there. Okay, and now if we look in here again, I jumped off here, you can see on the fee distribution screen, it has given that to the responsible attorney. So once again, it went to the responsible party here. All right, so the, either a fee or a retainer we'll both use that rule. Okay, let's see what else we've got here. Uh, can you do a matter write-off and have the time zero out without printing and posting a bill first? Well, actually you can, but you wanna think this one through. All right, I'm gonna bring up a ledger here so you can see, or the matter billing activity as it's properly called. Okay, and I've actually got a cost in here on this matter that I've already input as time went by. Okay, and I have a couple time tickets here. Okay, well, if it's now, you know, it's been months and the boss says, you know what, just write that off. We're never going to collect that money. So what you can do is come over and use, uh, you know what, we'll, we'll close this up and come back to it. There's a tool under matters called the complete matter write-off. Now, you want to be careful with this one. This isn't a courtesy discount. This isn't just writing off fees on a matter. This is going to write everything off. It's going to write the cost off as well as the time. So when you open this up, there's a nice warning message here letting you know that this is going to delete all unbilled time. So if there's a chance, that this person is going to be coming back in, right? And you may be able to collect your money. You most likely want to print a bill and post it so you have those time tickets saved. Instead of deleting them, go ahead and print the bill and then do the write-off. But for those of us that know we're never going to get that money, we can just come in, choose our particular matter, okay? And of course, you can look that up if you want to. And here's where you're making the choice to delete all the unbilled time. So there we go, and write it off. Now it's letting me know that he still has money in trust. It will let us write off his billing information, but of course it's not going to get rid of the trust money. That's gonna remain in the account till we do something about that. Okay, but I can go ahead and do this portion. <laughs> he's, make, he's asking me like three times, am I sure? Okay, because don't you know it, you pick the one and you look away and then it's like, wait a minute, is that the one I wanted? So now let's see what it did. Back over to their matter billing activity, pop in their matter number, and now we can see that it has written off costs. Some of these costs were prior to the, that, you know, the, the time frame I'm showing here, but it's written off the, the fee and it's written off the hard cost. Okay, and those time tickets are gone. So now his balance, looking up here, is back is down to zero. He still has his money in trust, but we have written off his case. So that's if you want to write off all time and not have to come in under billing and go to time tickets and find all the time tickets and delete them one at a time. That's kind of a pain. So that complete matter write-off is a good thing, but we've got to know what it does. Okay, of course, you still could use cost and adjustments if it's a partial write-off. Um, the part, the uh, cost and adjustments write-offs will not delete unbilled time, so you're still having those float around out there that you're going to have to need to clean up. Okay, uh, let's see here. Here's a couple for accounting. Let's take a look at that. How do I incorporate online banking so that I can automatically reconcile like I do with my personal finances? Okay, we are personal finances, something like in Quicken or QuickBooks or something like that. Abacus has something similar, um, and you may have seen this over here under the GL drop down menu. There's something called online banking. Now, just to make sure everybody knows what it can and cannot do, because this is not a miracle worker, this cannot go out and pay bills online. 
Okay, abacus cannot do that. They're not allowed to go out and take money out of your account and give it away. Okay, what we can do here is download your bank statement so that it comes into abacus and is ready for you when you go in to do the actual bank reconciliation. Okay, so it downloads it and places it in here. You don't get to skip reconciling, unfortunately. We still have to go in there and do the reconciliation, but this will download it for us. But prior to being able to click the button that says download, and unfortunately mine is a little make-believe company, so I don't have a real bank account because this is a real bank account it would download from, um, you do have to do a little setup in your chart of accounts. So let's jump over here under File under setup down to that chart of accounts okay and mine may look a little different because i've played with mine a bit i'm going to take my operating account here all right and i'm going to edit it when you click on edit excuse me it will bring up the screen you want to check the little box that says enable online banking so that gets checked and when you check that box obviously a new tab appears and these are the two tabs that need to be filled out with information before you can download your statement. So here's where you go through and select your bank. Obviously your, your uh, very private uh, user ID for logging in and your password. You choose the type of account, your account number, the routing number, all of that needs to be filled out. Then these advanced details. Now, these are from the bank. Okay, so most likely you may have to contact your bank and find out this business here. Okay, but this does need to be filled out as well. I have heard that sometimes the app ID and the app VER may change at the bank. So if you're having trouble downloading, you may want to check and see if these are um, updated, if you need to update these because they have changed. Because Abacus really doesn't have any influence over what the bank, you know, when they change these uh, different institutional things here. Then you can test your bank connection to make sure it's actually going to work. So this is the background work you need to do. And then you can go to online banking and actually download your statement. Do you have to do this to do a bank rec? No. This is a little kind of like bells and whistles because it will bring in and match when you download the statement, it will match the entries that it finds on the bank statement as well as what's in Abacus. And it will put a little Y in this column that just says the word C. That really stands for cleared. So it will clear the entries it can find. Now, this doesn't complete your bank reconciliation. As I say, you still have to come in to the reconciliation itself, go in, and obviously your Ys will be in place because it will know, but you will then um, keep going and you know matching up other things as need be but this has to be still be completed whether you do a download or not okay all right if you guys have questions that you're thinking of please feel free to type them in the little questions section of the go to webinar panel because then i should be able to see them and we can talk about other things like i say um, i've gotten these questions ahead of time from some of our users um, just so you know how to submit questions, you always submit them through webinars at abacusnext.com, and then they give them to me, and then I have them ready for class. But you can type them in as well. Okay, let's go back. We have a couple more here I forgot. How can I schedule regular monthly credit card charges, such as I have $70 payable to the cable company on the 5th of every month? This is a great question because I'm not sure everybody understands or, or knows that they've got this option in your, in your system. As long as you enter vendors, right, you've got to go in under file, under setup, and set up vendors. These are the people or companies you're paying for services you receive, either for clients or for a firm incurred costs, right? So vendors do have to be set up. Then under AP, you can go down to your recurring payables. These are things you pay every single month, all right? So you can open this up. I have a few in here, but just to show you what I mean, you can add another one in here. So if I click on add, it's gonna wanna know who my vendor is. So this is where I'm saying you have to have the vendor set up. So I'm gonna come in and start typing, and we're gonna call this Time Warner. So a double click puts that in place. 
what day of every month is this due on? So there you go, you got a due date. The dollar amount that is going to be owed each time. Now, a little trick here. If it's something like your cell phone bill um, or something that varies every single month, it's not always the same. You could just put in a penny and then after these do what we call merge, you will be able to edit them and change them, okay? So if you don't know the amount, that's not going to stop you from actually putting in the recurring payable and then edit it after. So we just set this up one time. So I'm just going to put in here. There we go. Oop, I cannot type. I still can't type. I'm not getting any better at it either. Okay, then you will, of course, want to pull the appropriate account from your chart of accounts to apply this against. Okay, if you have multiples, obviously you could do that. Okay, and it's going to put it in our list. Then Abacus, if you've seen the message that pops up at the beginning of the month, you have so many recurring payables, would you like to merge them now? You don't even have to do this. This is what Abacus does. Okay, so it comes in when you click the button and say yes, it takes these. You don't have to click any of these buttons. All you will see is this button or this message right here telling you it's taken all nine of these entries and put them over into enter and post payables. So now for those that need to be edited, like uh, let's say I got my Office Depot bill, okay, I can come in and edit this and put in the actual dollar amount, okay? And then I'm ready to post these and print checks. So that's a lot less work to just have to fill in the dollar amount if it does change every month than having to re-enter these things. I know how boring that can be. So this is a great little uh, trick here if you want to use recurring payables. Um, just maybe for a future topic, we also have recurring journal entries because I know we just love journal entries. So if you do have things that go through the bank account that are not checks and not online payments, we can set those up as journal entries. Okay, let's see here. All right, guys, uh, another question. And this is one I have not really talked about much in any of my classes. How do you write up a bill? Okay, how do you increase a bill? Let's say it's for particular dollar amount, but the attorney says, you know what? Nope, we're going to charge them a bit more because it was a lot more complicated than we expected. How can you do that? Well, you've got two ways, okay? If it's something like a flat fee case, you may want to uh, come in through cost and adjustments and add a fee in here, a fee charge. So I'm going to pick a matter. Let's see, this one is at hand. Use the code FEE, -E, and I know it's going to tell us that this is only for beginning balances, but you guys, I've learned a lot about this program. You're learning the tricks about this program. This is a trick, okay? So say I'm increasing it by $100, okay? You want to put in a nice description in here so you know why you did this, okay? Okay, and leave it on a debit. This way it will charge the client $100 more and place that on their bill. Okay, so that is the big deal here is it has, it has to be a debit. If you say a credit, it's going to take $100 away. Generally, when we're doing discounts, we take it away. So we want to, this is an upcharge on the bill. Okay. And this message, like I say, we don't need to be concerned because this is a little workaround, if you will, for Abacus to be able to, to increase the dollar amount owed on a bill. The other way, and this is something brand new to Abacus, so you may want to pay attention here because you can use it either for writing up or um, actually just keeping track of the actual amount of time was done versus the billable amount of time that was done. These are on time tickets, okay? So when you're entering a note and you tell it that it is to be billed, it brings up the time ticket screen in law. And that time ticket screen is now going to look like this. Okay, so here again, our good old matter number. Okay, and this is what we're talking about. So now it used to just be we put in one amount of time and that was it. We could never say that it was a billable for this amount, but they really worked on it that amount. 
okay? If I wanted to bill it for more hours than they actually worked on it, I can do that and write this down, okay? This goes to productivity report, so it will be actually showing the true amount there. So you can use this. Now, I'm thinking most of the time it's probably be, will be used in the reverse effect where you're actually charging less hours than it took to do the work, okay? So just know actual is what they worked, billables, what's going on the bill. So this is a new feature in version 2325. Uh, that if you, you know, this looks handy to you, you're going to want to make sure you get upgraded to the latest and greatest version of Abacus. Okay. All right. Let's see here. Let's see if I can pull this down so I can read it. Oh, like. All right. I have a question here. Our practice wants to use the accounting program to keep track of retainers only. Can you recommend a place to start learning how to use it? Videos or documentation? Well, uh, you definitely can use videos and documentation, okay? On the Abacus Law website or Abacus Next website, either name will get you to the same place because we're, we are corporate ran as Abacus Next. You all are using Abacus Law. All right, there obviously we have other products out there with different names, but abacuslaw.com or abacusnext.com will take you there. You go uh, under the search button, you can go to training, and it will show you videos we have already online for everyone to use. And in under our help drop downs here, okay, there is um, information in here as well. All right, uh, mine. Uh, this is taking you into basically use help when you're on any screen. In Abacus Law, under help, if I can pull that up, let's see if it's going to work for me today. Under help, okay, there are the accounting getting started guide, the accounting reference guide, and whenever it says accounting, it means accounting and billing, okay? We, we either It's either law or accounting and billing. So two reference guides right there to get you going, okay? And in the app revision history, it also tells you um, what occurred in the last update. So you kind of know what, you know what new things you're looking for in your system. So this was under app revision history under the help dropdown, and this is all in law. So app revision history or additional help for your reference guide or the Abacus Law website, okay? Hopefully that answered your question. Uh, let's jump back in here. We have just a couple more minutes. I have one last question here. And it was, how do you issue a refund? Okay, so refunds, there's actually now an item under billing for a refund, and these are refunds to clients only. Okay, this, we're not talking about refund. Well, I'm not, we're not getting into anything else here, but refund clients only. So you can open this up. And it's like um, entering a posting option here because you are going to post this and then go write a check if you're using the accounting portion of the program. So we're going to add. So you come in and say which matter number it is. All right. So we've got that. And then we come in. It's going to pull the client as the payee. All right. So yeah, you know what? I'm going to use my other one because that's a person's name. That looks like a business, and sometimes that's not real good. Okay. Um, cancel out, come back in, and try this again. Okay. All right. So now, if we want to write a check to this person, Jimmy Ross, we're going to click on this button, okay, because it's his matter. There's his client. Obviously, he's the client name. Um, and here is the payee. So we can come in here and start typing his name to find him. Okay, now I want to uncheck this button to be able to find him. Okay, and here's Jimmy Ross. So that is the Jimmy I want to use. So you simply click on the open button here for the lookup, start typing in their name and be able to pull them from your client name list out of Abacus Law. And how much is it? Now, if you want that effect to affect a matter billing activity, in other words, you want it to record over here, you want to make sure to check this button and put in something in here, refund to client. 
Okay, you have to do your distribution as to how what you're going to take it away from. And if it is a fee, you're taking it away from fees because they've already paid you the fees and you're refunding the fees. We have to make sure to um, actually take it against a timekeeper. Okay, so if I put 100 here and over here. Oh dear. Okay, great place for me to have to stop here today, huh? Um, you're going to put it in both places here under the refund and the write-off and post it, and then you will be able to print a check. All right, so this updates the matter billing activity as well as sets it up for a check to be written out of your operating account. The last thing I just want to mention is we have to know, though, if the refund's not coming out of operating, if it's coming out of trust, you're going to want to open up trust and write a trust demand check. Do not, you know, take it, at, make sure you take it out of the right account. That's my, my uh, <laughs> bit of knowledge for the day is if we can keep us in the right bank account, we're halfway there. All right. Okay. I don't want to run over here. I know you guys have other things to do as well. Busy, busy. I appreciate your time and um, your attendance here. Any questions you have, please. Uh, email us at webinars at abacusnext.com. There will be um, an audio video that you can download that they will be sending to you, a link to it in the next few days. So once again, thank you again. Stay, stay tuned for all of our upcoming webinars. You can also see those on the website. Thank you all. Have a great day. Bye-bye.